Alright guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Tactical Rap here back again today wanting to discuss the direction that Call of Duty is taking as a franchise really and uh, the move away of course from events, especially open events and the like as we've seen throughout the Black Ops 4 season and of course continuing really in a more dramatic format in the franchise season. And just considering the um, the approach that Joanna Ferries and the guys of that division are taking to try and make Call of Duty Esports profitable for them and the other teams involved, because of course that helps them as well, and also the direction that the sports leagues, which they seem to be basing the, uh, the CDL off, are taking, well, a different tack. And, um, you know, just some thoughts on that, and if you guys agree with me, if you guys disagree with me, Greatly appreciate to hear your input in the comment section below. Hope you guys had a great um, Thanksgiving yesterday. If you guys are from the States and you celebrate it. Today is Black Friday. Um, just a quick note. I'm not sure if I'm going to be buying anything in Black Friday. But this time last year I bought this microphone I'm using now. The Blue Yeti. And um, so that was kind of when my uh, my videos took a pretty decent upstep in quality. Hopefully by the time the new season comes around I'll have some new graphics in place. I'm not exactly sure what my plan is for the new season. I don't know how much content there really is to be, to be made, right? Um, I'm trying to make it to the end of this year with a video every single day. That's the plan. Next year I don't know if that's going to be attainable but... I've said that a few times over this past year and I've still managed to seem to make it work somehow. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Like if you do, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. On the verge of 16,000 subscribers as of recording. Um, thought this was funny as well. Just happy Thanksgiving. So NV, Dallas Fuel, Dallas Empire. They do a video. They get Illy to make a video here. And um, yeah, most of the guys are saying like, oh, happy Thanksgiving. Have a great one. Stay safe. And then Illy comes out with stay safe. Keep grinding. It's just a quality video um it just sums up this guy's attitude i guess i can just imagine a hastro going to Italy like oh okay say like happy thanksgiving all of this stuff and he just comes out with four words and um you know just sums them up thought that was a pretty funny start to the video let's go through a couple of things before i get into this topic so yes as we talked about yesterday panda proto gonna be substitutes on the seattle surge and they've been playing the 2ks with vivid super and spoof so it looks like it's gonna be seattle's path to pro team now of course we haven't heard anything yet about uh, whether seattle have a path to pro and amateur team of course yesterday we talked about the old um well the dallas empire mutex situation saying that doesn't look like they're gonna have a path to pro academy challenger roster which means that um whoever's on that team won't be able to play on it there was a couple of queries about like whether tommy won't be able to play and okay yes it's definitely possible that the guys that they have as substitutes the likes of tommy could substitute in for the main roster um i personally just think looking at that main roster that might not be required at any point but you know we'll have to see maybe that team doesn't do as well as a lot of us are expecting and um you know thinking they will do so yeah who knows this could be the path to pro team that panda and proto are going to sign up with it definitely makes sense to have them both as substitutes and both playing on the same path to pro roster um so vivid super and spoof will probably also be contracted to seattle if that's how it worked out but yeah just uh and you know as i hold shift says confirmed that they're both on the two-way contracts and easy max says they have to be to be playing the 2ks and such one more thing to mention before we get into it then so you know jack felling so this is a guy, he works at Activision Blizzard, Call of Duty League stuff. He says, what's your favorite weapons, skins, and camos in Call of Duty and other esports? Just like, look, I agree with Merc here, talks about the Black Ops 3 team camos. I'm just wondering whether this is kind of a hint to say that they're coming soon in Modern Warfare. Um, I hope it is. I doubt it, though, somehow. Uh, I thought I'd bring it to your guys' attention anyway, just in case it does happen. Um, I thought this is another thing here with um, Eggs kind of calling out Pac-Man and Maven in a way. He's just been on a rampage lately with a lot of this stuff. So, um, Pac-Man did this interesting tweet talking about, like, Twitter fingers and this stuff, um, saying that Call of Duty pros, they're complaining a lot about the game, which, uh, I mean, okay, and as Silly says, this is why I tweet just potential fixes aren't gonna bite the hand that feeds us, obviously. I do understand, um, why a lot of pros are complaining about the game in the current state, but I also kind of get that, um, at the end of the day, the attitude is oftentimes kind of, like, whining in a way. I, I guess it can seem like that from the developer's perspective. And Pac-Man then replies to a tweet which has since been deleted saying, that's like saying, so I guess the, um, whoever this reply was disagreed with Silly or said something along the lines of, um, you know, it's, we should be free to complain and all this stuff, right? So, which, okay, fair enough. But anyway, so... Pac-Man says, that's like saying the NFL doesn't feed us, the owners of the teams do. Well, yes, that is true, but do you think attacking the body publicly is a smart way to go about it? There are obviously changes that have to be made. I just think a lot of people go about it incorrectly. Maven says, if I was a bartender, I worked on tips. I needed people to frequent my bar. 
I wouldn't spend all day bashing the bar so people didn't come to it. Um, I'm not sure that's a 100% valid uh, analogy, but, you know, whatever. Don't want to get into that today, really. And Eggs comes back with, dude, I hate the suit side, saying, like, um, you know, when they kind of cozy up, I guess, to the executives and all this stuff, you'll legitimately act as if every issue is a new issue. I'm not even implying to you'll enjoy your night and your CDL paychecks. And we get a couple of replies here. And Maven says, I haven't signed anything for the CDL. You know, I guess at the same time, even if Maven hasn't signed anything and isn't locked in for the upcoming season, he still wouldn't go out of his way to um to give negative publicity for them when that's a potential path that he could take for the, the upcoming season and probably will, I would imagine. But anyway, thought that was interesting. Let's move on to the main topic of discussion for today then. Now, let's go through this article real quick on ESPN. So Adrian, not going to try and pronounce the second name because even I haven't given it a go before, but he talks about the NBA insider. I don't know this guy. I don't follow the NBA. I'm sure a lot of you guys do. NBA is engaged in serious discussions with MBPA and broadcast partners on sweeping dramatic changes to the league calendar that includes reseeding of conference finals and in-season tournament and postseason playing. Let's get into it. So let's go through one, um, yeah, a few paragraphs from this article. I'll leave a link down below so you guys can check it out. The NBA is engaged in serious discussions. So the National Basketball Association or whatever, pretty sure that's what it stands for. Um, you know, serious discussions with National Basketball Players Association, so it probably does, and broadcast partners on sweeping dramatic changes as we talked about shortening of the regular season to a minimum of 78 games discussions are progressing with hopes of bringing a vote in april meeting um so look effectively what's happening here is monte cristo points out in this tweet in this tweet traditional sports are realizing that league formats suck and are trying to make changes meanwhile in esports we have idiots trying to mimic a league model because it's what traditional sports do and adam apicella follows on from this in a second just before i want to get to that i want to tackle this tweet because there's there's many leagues. The NBA is honestly in a in a great position. I think what they're doing makes sense. And you know, it must be said in esports more generally. I did a video a couple of days ago. It was a pre-recorded one. If you guys haven't checked it out on viewership expectations for the upcoming season, I'd probably recommend it because I look at the viewership figures that we've had in the previous seasons and what we have at events compared to what we have in the league. And it's pretty obvious that event weekends where we have okay a three-day event or a five-day event in the case of champs. By the end of it, we know we're going to get a winner. And in a month and a half, two months' time, we know we're going to have another similar event where we have another winner. And we have little, you know, pinpoints throughout the season going to the end of the season when we know who the best, you know, who the best team is at the particular time. Events are crazy exciting. Great atmosphere to be there as well. Now, this is something that you can't really do in a traditional sport. You can't have a three-day weekend in, like, um, soccer or football or whatever and just say, okay, you, you know, <laughs> we've got 16 teams here they're all going to play each other at the end of the weekend we're going to have a winner that doesn't happen in real sports that's only really a possibility in you know esports right and call of duty is a great example of where it has worked fantastically well over the years i would also say just because i know about the premier league in the united kingdom that yes it's a season-long league there's 38 matches that are played between the 20 teams throughout the entire season so each team plays 38 matches at the end of it, the champions are crowned the champions. But throughout the season, there were many other tournaments that go on that have knockout games. So you've got the FA Cup, the Champions League, even though it sounds like a league effectively after the group stage, it's a knockout tournament with a couple of legs each way. You know, you've got the League Cup, whatever it's going to be sponsored by on the year. All these other tournaments that happen throughout the course of the season um, that, you know, go alongside the main league. Of course, there's international games going on as well. So things switch up a lot in the football season in the UK and, and around the rest of the football season as well. So it's not just a, a season-long league. And as NBA seem to have been realising... Why don't we shorten the schedule a little bit of the, of the schedule, sorry, <laughs> for the um for the league and mean and make it so that we have more in-season tournaments and stuff like this, which isn't really a possibility in traditional sports, but it seems like that is the direction that Activision are taking here with Call of Duty because they see that's a model that they can see succeeding and it's easy to mimic, I suppose. But just as they're starting to mimic it and move towards what traditional sports do, traditional sports are looking at esports in a way and thinking, well, these in season tournaments seem to be very successful in terms of viewership. Maybe they're not looking at esports, maybe they're just seeing a general trend in what fans tend to be interested. We've known this, I guess, in esports naturally for, you know, 20 years, right? Um, but just at the moment with the, we, uh, that the executives decide to move away is the moment that r real sports see, like, okay, maybe there's an opportunity here. So 
This is what Adam, has to, Adam Apazella has to say on it. Franchises for esports. Awesome. Hosted team hosted events for home team hosted events for esports. You know, I am not don't really want to tackle this. This second one, definitely, yeah. The, the idea of home team hosted events is really cool to me. If it was actually a proper event. Like, can you imagine? Uh, we have 11 you know, cities, I guess, in the, the 12 teams around the world. Imagine that every month or every three weeks you had an event like an open, it doesn't have to be an open tournament, we had it in Black Ops 4 where they weren't open tournaments, you had an open bracket winner, you had a main bracket winner, you know, I, I don't really mind too much if the amateurs are separate to the pros, obviously in an ideal world I kind of liked it where you know, any team that attends the tournament could end up winning at the end of the weekend, at the same time I don't mind if the pro teams just go up against each other, but at least I know at the end of the weekend there's going to be a winner there. Um, and that was just fantastic. And imagine like every three weeks you had that in every single city around the world. Like that would be the, the ideal, right, in, in my opinion. Um, and maybe have like a, a league or something that goes in, in between or something. I don't know. Um, but you know, look, having events as the forefront priority is how Call of Duty's always been. It's how it's kind of worked for the best over time. Um, and look, as Adam Apicella says, moving away from epic weekend long tournaments, not awesome. I know a model that can that can be made that marries both. The NBA is spot on. Um, and you know, as Adam Apicella says here, of course, he's no longer working with the MLG, with the Activision guys. He's moved on to create this esports engine and um, he's going to be working, I think, with New York to help put on their events. But, you know, if this guy was making, calling the shots over at uh, Activision Blizzard regarding Call of Duty, um, I think the scene would be in a great place. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. Leave your thoughts down below here because, in my opinion, there's a lot of lessons which traditional sports can take from esports. Um, and, I, you know, I, I'm just concerned that esports is trying to mimic traditional sports and it's just not going to work out for the better. We don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the fan base, we don't have the revenue model is the key one of traditional sports fans. How many fans are realistically going to pay, you know, so much money for a season ticket to go along and see games? How many fans in esports are actually buying jerseys? people don't even pay any money in esports right we just watch um streams on twitch for free you know there's literally no revenue model even going on right now people cannot extract revenue from any of the esports fans and you know the, the idea of a global league esports can reach across the world traditional sports teams are doing that as well right they're trying to reach out to fan bases in other regions of the world um they're trying to make things less about just their home city and uh, esports has kind of already understood this for several years and it's also understood the idea that we have the amazing ability to do these weekend long events which traditional sports do not have of course because of fatigue and things like this um so so yeah it just concerns me that that's the direction we're taking and i feel like in the long term uh, that you know this can't work out for the best of esports i feel like in in the end it's going to be realized that the model that we have been using for the last 20 years in esports and the last 10 years in Call of Duty is the one that makes the most sense. And I don't think that's a particularly controversial opinion. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you next time.